Ugh. See that thing behind me? Not that, but that. That is my DIY lithium battery. And today, I'm gonna tell you how this dummy built it. How do you like my knees? They look massive. So I was in the market for some new batteries and I originally had some AGM batteries that uh, I had managed to destroy, you know, growing pains and the like. So I decided to look into lithium. Now, lithium batteries can be a bit pricey if you wanna go through like the bigger name brands. So I thought I'd look into this whole DIY market. Turns out you can buy four 3.2 volt cells or a 12 volt 280 amp hour lithium battery off AliExpress for something around $450. So that in comparison to Battleborn's 270 amp hour battery, which is $2,900, uh, is a pretty good deal. And the reason there's such a large price difference between the two is because you can't just take these cells and drop them into your van or RV and expect them to work. You have to get a couple additional components and put some labor and time into it to get them workable. The other reason is because it takes two months for those cells to get to you if you order them off AliExpress. So, there's quite a bit of a waiting period. Anyway, there's several reasons to go with lithium over AGM, and I'm not the guy to sit here and blab about it. So I'm gonna focus on how I put my battery together as well as my housing for the battery. So if you decide to go with the DIY route, there's a couple other components you need to get along with your cells. And the main one being a BMS or a battery management system. I ordered the Dolly or Daily 4S 12 volt 120 amp common port BMS. So a BMS is what keeps your cells in balance. You don't wanna charge your battery if your cells are out of whack because you might end up dropping one below the 10% which can damage your battery or charge one higher than the 90%, which will also damage your battery. It keeps everything in a safe level. And again, I am not a battery specialist by any means. I am just regurgitating some of the things I've seen on the internet. And if you wanna get more in detail on how all these things work, there's a channel out there called DIY Solar Power with Will Pros. He seems to be a whiz at all of this and covers everything in great detail. So I'd highly suggest going and checking out his channel if you want to learn more. Another component you should snag is some type of battery shunt. Now Victron, Victron makes a couple versions. I have their BMV712. That allows you to monitor your battery and kind of program everything to the battery that you're gonna make. I also snagged a Victron Smart Battery Sense, which is just like a, a temperature reader, but there are other things that you can get that would just directly connect to the shunt. And technically with those items, you'd be able to put your battery together and put it to use, but you'll probably wanna build some sort of housing for it. And if you plan on living in your van year round where you're gonna experience winter cold temps and hot, sweaty summer temps, you might also wanna look into a way that you can control the temperature of that housing or battery compartment. Lithium iron phosphate batteries can't be charged in freezing temperatures. So if it hits 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius and you charge your battery, it could cause some serious damage. And then when it's super hot and you are pulling like a large amperage from the battery, you could cause some delamination. You can probably just travel with good weather if you have the capability of doing that. But if you don't, you gotta come up with something else. And that's how I came across the channel called Freely Roaming. The gentleman, I forget his name, built a housing that had a heating pad at the bottom of the batteries and then a fan with an exhaust on the sides so that when it was cold, the heating pads would kick on with this little temperature sensor thing that he had. And then the fan, if it got too hot, would kick on with the other temperature sensors he had. And that way, the batteries could charge in the cold weather and stay safe and run properly in the hot weather. And so after watching his videos, I ended up snagging a lot of the components that he suggested and used on his battery build out. So the supplies for my battery housing include some half inch birch to actually build the box, 
a five inch computer cooling fan, a four pack of 12 volt, 25 watt little heating pads that look like craft singles. I only ended up using three. Two digital temperature controller modules. This is what's gonna allow you to set a temperature for the fans and the heating pads to kick on and off. A vent, so your fan can circulate cool air throughout your box. Some galvanized joist paneling. A quarter inch threaded rod. I went with a six foot one. Nope, doesn't care. Then some quarter inch nuts and washers and lock washers. Three eight by 10 acrylic sheets and a roll of Reflectix. Then to connect things together, I grabbed some 22 gauge wire, 18 gauge wire, and then for the big battery connections, two gauge wire. I also had some heat shrink butt connectors. I snagged an automotive electrical terminal connectors kit, a heavy duty wire lug kit, and then some heat resistant tape. And if you want, you can snag a digital battery capacity tester with some battery leads to go with it. If you want to have some way of seeing the levels of your batteries on your battery box. And as far as tools go, I snagged a lug crimping tool for the large wire lugs. You'll need a wire stripper, a multimeter, a heat gun, and some tin snips. And of course, to cut and put your box together, you're gonna need tools like an impact driver, a drill, a jigsaw, a table saw, or a circular saw. It's all gonna depend on how you decide to configure your box. All right, so I think that covers it all. Let's jump into the build. So like I said, it took about two months for my cells to arrive, but once they got here, I immediately checked them for any damage or swelling, and I also wanted to find out what the voltage of each cell was. So I took my multimeter, did a quick little test on each one. One of my cells ended up having a lower voltage than the rest, so I had to top balance them. So I made some custom bus bars out of copper tubing so I can connect them all in parallel and balance them. There's plenty of videos online showing you exactly how to do this. But once I knew my cells were all good, it was time to make my little compression rig. So a lot of people will squeeze the cells together in order to prevent delamination within the battery cells. So the first thing I did was take some acrylic sheets. Safety. Had to cut them down to size and place them in between each cell so that just in case any of that plastic wrapping around each cell is to rub off, they wouldn't be touching each other and then causing a short. Then I cut out my eight by eight ends out of half inch birch, which were like the bread to my battery sandwich. And I probably could have made the width nine inches or maybe even a little more because when I went and I pre-drilled the holes for the rods that I was going to put in to compress the two plates together, uh, they were very tight to the battery body themselves. Luckily, I did have enough space and I made it work, but you could probably make yours a little bit bigger. Anyway, I had those two sides put together. The cells had their dividers. I took my six foot threaded rod and cut it down into four sections that were 13 and three quarters long. But before I made my cuts, I made sure to put a nut on each piece of the rod so that when I did make my cut, I can spin the nut off and it would get rid of any like loose burrs so I could thread it back on. After I had them all cut, I took a small belt sander and rounded out my edges so I didn't have anything sharp that was gonna cut my hands. Once those were good to go, I assembled that little sandwich together over the cells and then put on a washer, then a lock washer, and then a nut on each end of the rods and tightened them down slowly because I didn't wanna make them so tight and uneven to where they were gonna bow and maybe crack those pieces of wood. I will say some people will just go use some zip ties uh, to squeeze everything together, which is a lot quicker and easier. I don't know if it's better, but if you are crunched for time and don't really care, you can always do that. Hey, what are you doing laying on my table? So then it was time to build the actual battery housing. Now I'll tell you the dimensions that I have for my box, but if I could do it again, I'd probably make it a bit bigger. So the overall dimensions of my box landed around 15 inches long, 11 inches wide, and 10 inches tall. I was so proud I got all my channels cut into place and then I go and I put the battery in and it doesn't fit because of the um, threaded rods overhanging on the side that I didn't account for. So I had to improvise and make more channels. So I cut a half inch channel in here to fit them. And now they kind of serve as uh, guides. 
so that the battery sits in there extremely well. So once I had all my pieces cut, I needed to find out where I was gonna place all the components on and within the box. So I decided to set my vent and my BMS on one side, and then on the opposing side, I set the two temperature controllers with the fan, as well as the little battery monitor at the front end, right there, that side. <laughs> and once I had that all cut and ready, I decided to put together my base heating pad. I went and took that galvanized sheet that I bought and cut out a little rectangular piece to the exact size of the bottom of all the cells put together. And I did the same thing with the Reflectix that I had bought. The idea was to use those two pieces as a sandwich. The cheese goes in the middle of the sandwich. So I took my Reflectix and put that down first with some spray adhesive. And I just did that to keep it in place after I figured out the center point. And then I went and took that heat resistant tape and taped it down. Because in my experience, that spray adhesive doesn't do too well in heat. Then I took three of those heating pads, centered them up and taped them down. And then finally I took that galvanized sheet, put it on top of it all and taped that all down as well. I covered the whole thing just in case, again, that plastic sheeting on the battery cells were to rub off, it wouldn't touch metal to metal and then short it out. With that, it was time to put the whole box together. Now, I just took some wood glue, I went in every groove that I had made and I smoothed out all the excess and placed it all together. I took my little stapler and I pinned in two on each edge just to give it a little bit more reinforcement before I took some clamps, squeezed it all together, and then I let it sit overnight to dry. The next day, I placed all of my little components on the box. I screwed the temp controllers and the BMS in with these little half inch screws, and I just hot glued the vent and the little computer fan in. I also taped that little battery monitor uh, on the front with some double-sided sticky tape and I punched a hole through with a drill bit so that the wires had a place to go into the box from that battery monitor. So once I had all that stuff in, it was time to wire some things together. And I'm gonna do my best to try to explain this without getting too confusing. So I started out by taking the left red wires of the heating pads and connecting them all to a single butt connector, taking all of that and connecting it to the yellow output wire on one of the temperature controllers. Then I took all of the right red wires on the heating pads, put them to a single butt connector, and took them and connected them to the black wire coming from the output of the temperature controller. I did the same thing with the fan and I didn't really film it. It was just taking the black wire and connecting it to the black output wire. And same thing, taking the red wire and connecting it to the yellow wire of the output of that temperature controller. There was an extra yellow wire on the fan and I think that might be there to control the speed of the fan, which I don't really have a use for. So I just taped it off. Then I took the positive wire from the input from one temperature controller and the other temperature controller and put them together so that I can run them to a switch. You wanna be able to control them, turn them on and off when you need them. It's night and you're not getting charged from solar. Your vehicle's off so you're not getting charged from your alternator and you're not plugged into shore power. So there's no power coming in and you're just trying to keep your batteries warm. So you're just draining them because those heat pads are on and that's no good. You only need them when you're charging those batteries to keep them warm. So I hooked those to a switch and then I brought those two wires out of the box to run down to my fuse panel so that they were fused and didn't connect directly to the battery. I turned it off. I turned it on. So with all those wired together, it was time for me to get the cells in there. I went and snagged some small like wall mount D-ring things, and I made sure the screws weren't long enough to go through three quarter inch wood. I put those in and I attached some extra paracord that I had to make some handles. And then I was able to just pick them up and then place them into the housing and luckily they fit. And with that in, it was time to connect all the batteries together in series with the BMS and the battery monitor and that Victron temperature sensor. So the BMS and that little battery monitor connect to your cells in the same way, but they have opposing colors. The BMS, you've got one black wire with four red wires. And then with this battery monitor up front, you've got four black wires and one red. With the BMS, that black wire goes to your battery main negative. And then those wires go in consecutive order of cell one positive, 
cell two positive, cell three positive, and cell four positive. It doesn't hurt to mark your cells, one, two, three, four, and then put some little tape on the wires so that you know which one's which, which I ended up having to do because I did mix them up the first time around. Then with that little battery monitor, if you got one, it hooks up the exact same way, just with different colors. The red wire goes to your battery negative, and then the black ones go in the same order of cell one positive, cell two positive, cell three positive, and cell four positive. Then on the BMS, you've got two wires coming out. Now the blue B minus wire goes to your battery main negative. So you wanna hook that in there along with the rest of the connections you've made. And don't forget that you also wanna get that little Victron battery sense on the main positive and negatives of your battery as well. And then to check if your BMS is hooked up properly and is working, you can take your multimeter and get a reading off of your battery positive and battery negative. And then you could take that negative and hook it to the BMS's P minus wire there. And if it reads the same thing you just had, that means it's reading it correctly and you're good. And then you'll know with the little battery monitor because it'll kick on once you plug it in and it'll be able to read all four cells and read the same voltage that you just got from reading from the battery positive and negative. That P minus wire then goes to your shunt. I ended up hooking up that later because I wasn't sure exactly where the battery was gonna land within my van. And then same thing with the large positive wire coming from the battery, this two gauge wire, because I wasn't sure where it was gonna go and how long I would need to make it and I didn't wanna come up short. So with everything connected, I whipped together a little lid out of some scrap and then I grabbed some extra pieces of hardware like handles and a little lock the lid. One thing that I haven't done yet that I'm going to do now is connect the temperature sensors. My left is the heat pads and my right is the fan. I'm just going to put them both on this side, tape directly to the battery itself. And that was about it. My battery was done and I was super curious to get the weight of it. I went and snagged myself a really cheap scale. It's not a digital scale, so it's going to be like a rough guess and it's a little off but I'm gonna weigh myself and then I'm gonna hold it and weigh myself again and you know subtract the difference so it says I'm 145 which is not right with the battery battery it says I am about 210 65 pounds for that whole battery setup so I originally had two uh, 200 amp hour AGM batteries and they weighed 108 pounds a piece. So together that was 216 pounds. Now when you compare that to the 65 pounds with this battery and the size of it, it's pretty crazy. You might be thinking like, oh, but you had 400 amp hours with that and this is only 280 amp hours. Well, with AGM, you could really only use 50% of the capacity without damaging the battery. So I really only had 200 amp hours of usable battery. Now with lithium, you can use up to 80% of the battery. So out of the 280 amp hours, I can use around 224. So I guess I have 24 more usable amp hours than my previous setup and I'm way lighter and I saved a ton of space. And with that, you have a battery with a nice temperature controlled housing. And I wanna thank you for watching. Like I said, I'll be linking everything that I used within this build. I'll also have links for our Patreon and whatever merch that we have left, as well as my shoe company, Anomaly Footwear. If you're feeling generous or feeling like you'd be able to support us, please do. We're very poor right now. And anything and everything helps to keep this going. So stay tuned for the next episode where I go through all the components that I had to change and get in order to run a lithium battery system. And I'll show you how the fans and the heating pads work too. Cool beans, cool beans, cool beans, cool beans, cool beans. Dude. Go, 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 go. <gasps> You're stepping on all my things. Go, go, go off. Stay, 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 off, 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 hi boogies, stay, off, go, go, off, he 
doesn't listen. <laughs>